Hi, I'm Ivy Slater. Welcome to Slater Success Live today. I have an amazing guest, a dear friend that we've become friends over the years. We met each other at a conference 100 years ago. And Christine Agro is here to talk about what do you think about gratitude? She has written that gratitude is often conceived as a bunch of woo-woo nonsense. Big question mark. Do you think that way? Studies say otherwise. We're talking today about the science behind gratitude. Now, Christine is a keynote speaker, an author, a TEDx speaker. Um, she has been on ABC, Fox, uh, Good Day Chicago, Good Day Connecticut, Good Morning Connecticut. Um, I could go on and on. She's been quoted in the New York Times. She's been part of Late Night with Seth Meyers, Ladders, Huff Post. She is a expert like there is no other. I know when I have questions in this el in this elk of where I'm seeing, what I want to do, where do I see visions going? She's a wonderful, amazing person to brainstorm with, to help me actually really laser in. So Christine, what a joy to have you come on Slater Success Live today. Hey, Ivy, thanks for having me. And what a lovely in uh, intro for me. Thank you. <laughs> And well, you know, and list, viewers, as you're scrolling through, this is an amazing opportunity to actually ask the questions that you want to know. Um, it was important to me, I'm going to be complete disclosure, to do something around gratitude. Thanksgiving, you, Thanksgiving time sparks a time within myself that I want to touch in and think about all the things I'm grateful for. You know, first of all, that we're having Thanksgiving dinner with family again this year. Yeah. Like, start small, and that's huge. Um, Christine, when you've done your research and, and, and speak and, and educate around gratitude, you start with really looking about the science behind it because it's conceived as woo. Yeah, I do. I, I do now. Um, I, one of the things that I love about the time that we're in is that science, uh, science is kind of catching up with the woo. <laughs> <laughs> Which I is love nice, that. Science right? is catching up with the woo. It is. It's really nice. And, um, you know, I mean, science, I, I find science fascinating. Uh, a lot of science, science discoveries come from intuition and knowingness, a sense of, I think this might be, or maybe this might be the answer to something. And then science. So that that's gut instinct yeah. to create a hypothesis. Yep. Yeah. And then science goes about proving it, which is lovely. And uh, I was thinking about gratitude and I really do like to bring the you know, the background behind why certain things work and how they work. I find that, like I said, fascinating. Uh, and so when I when I wrote this particular piece of information about the science of of gratitude, I was really I got really in the weeds reading studies and, you know, <laughs> kind of digging around into how and why gratitude works. And it's fascinating. So when we look at it's it's been talked about to have a gratitude practice to write down those few things daily, whether it be morning, as you start your day, as you end a day, to you know reflect back on what you're grateful for. Where do you see the practice versus the impact? Uh, well, I think that I think that most of the time when people are doing gratitude practices they they are doing it from from the practice space right of i i've been told to do this i'm going to do it i'm going to write down what i'm grateful for and then somewhere along the way they may start to notice a difference in their um in what they're experiencing in their day to day when we actually understand that there is a science behind it and it triggers aspect or uh uh, parts in the brain, uh, reward centers, um, and there's a reason why then we start to look for those things that that uh, make us feel better, than, and it motivates us to start to do more. So I what I really want people to understand is that you can go deeper in your gratitude practice, right? It's not, it's, it, you, yeah, it's great to just write out those, those things that you're grateful for. It will get you somewhere. But when you start to recognize that the, that the action that you're taking is actually reprogramming, repatterning your way of thinking and way of interacting with the world around you, I think it takes it into a whole new level. So when it repatterns us, what are some of the things like, I, you know, is, is so much what I do, I look at results. Um, what are some of the impacts of 
when we actually start doing this, I remember years ago, I got myself a gratitude journal and I thought it was so cool and so trendy. And, and so, and then I kind of let the journal go, but kept the practice up. Mm -hmm. so, so what are some of the, the results that we see when we actually start adhering to a gratitude practice? Well, there you can have better sleep. Um, these are all hmm. proven um, in studies. You can have better, better sleep. You can have greater resiliency. Uh, so, you know, your reaction to things that you might stumble over, you, you don't, you, you don't spend so much time <laughs> in the so, stumble. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm going to, I can't help but jump in here. You know, um, not every moment in running a business and being that leader is always that moment that doesn't kind of have triggers that we couldn't use some resiliency and, and, you know, very much in the last year and a half or, and then some, we've pulled on the resiliency to, to help us lead through. Yeah. So what you're saying, the studies are showing that when you adhere to a gratitude practice, it helps us have that resilience. I, I, I look at it as a buoyancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that ability to, I, I would say sort of, you know, go with the flow, right? So instead of, instead of getting um, tripped up by the things that aren't working or that take you off in a different direction, just that flu that fluidity in your space that lets you move with whatever is happening, um, which is, of course, I think really necessary when, <laughs> when you run a business, right? Because as you said, things are, you know, things are always coming out of left field and you don't, you know, things don't go as planned and all of that wonderful stuff that we get to navigate. So, yeah. Um, you know, and they say that uh, having a gratitude practice, um, this was in good, I think it was in um, Greater Good Science, uh, that um, you are less likely to experience burnout, which you know, now is so important because I, I just hear so much from people about how burned out they are. And um, you know, part of that, I think, if I can sort of slide over into my naturopathic background, it's because we've been in fight or flight for so long mm -hmm. that we're just, our, our system is just exhausted, you know, and so we, we need to really replenish ourselves. And um, I would say cut out the coffee. <laughs> I know people don't want to hear that, but cut out the coffee um, and, and, you know, do things that are really going to help you uh, reset your space. So and gratitude is one of those things, interestingly. Yeah, you know, that's so interesting, because I literally was running a leadership roundtable, not a little before we jumped on here at LinkedIn Live. And a few of the leaders were expressing how much they're looking forward to the holidays, they need a break. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this break. I'm not really fit. Yeah, this is what their, their reactions were. So I'm not necessarily physically tired. I'm a mentally yeah. spent. Yeah. And so a gr kind of starting to add in bringing forth the gratitude practice in our days can actually start moving that burnout away. Yeah. That's huge. It is. It's really, it's really, really big. And I think, you know, it's great to have a, a journal and to write the things out that you're, you're grateful for, but there's other, you know, there's other, I think more, more, simple ways to do it. You know, when you wake up in the morning, just coming up with five things that you're grateful for. And when you go to bed, come up with five things that you're grateful for during the day. And then just having gratitude in general. I, I When I work with my students on gratitude, um, there's two things that we do. One is I love to take every moment of gratitude and actually look at what is it made up of? Because every moment of gratitude is different. So my gratitude for you is it's appreciation, it's um, respect, it's uh, there's like a, a kindness there. And that's what I feel when I think about you and, and I have gratitude for you in my life. Gratitude for my son is a completely different thing. And so you know, we can, we can actually go, like, like I said, go deeper into your gratitude by identifying what it's made up of. And the other piece is, um, which is, it's, it, I have a seven day gratitude deep dive. And, and one of the things that we do, which I love is having gratitude for the things that you don't like, 
right? Oh, wait, right? wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Tell me more. Here. Right? <laughs> so here I am. I'm at the gas pump. I'm, I'm filling up my, my tank and it's costing me $60. And I'm starting to get frustrated and annoyed. So I take a pause and I really think about, well, where is this gas going to take me? What am I going to be able to do because of this, the gas in my mm -hmm. tank? What people's lives have just been touched by the fact that I just filled up with gas? What's the supply chain and, and the and the life that they have because this is the living that that brings this gas to this gas tank? So it's it's shifting your your pers perspective on the things that you don't like and finding finding the gratitude underneath them, which is just it it's it changes everything. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's interesting because they, they were seeing definite results in supply chain, you know, especially in, in starting to get ready for the holidays. And there's things that are more challenging to get a hold of. And I like the perspective. It's a 100% practical, which I so appreciate, uh, practical perspective of what I'm grateful for of what I can have, mm -hmm. what I'm grateful for of the impact that the, the goes down to others yeah. is huge. Yeah. Um, taking that few minutes and connecting the dots that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, just, you know, take this into the workplace and, you know, whatever, whatever is irking you, you know, really try to find that, pick it apart and find the gratitude there. You know, what do you appreciate about, even if it's your job in the moment and you're not happy with it or something's going on, you know, what does your job allow you to do and, and who does it support and what is the end result of, of the work that you're doing? So, yeah, it, it, it changes everything. I think, I think in part because it takes us, um, you know, it takes us out of the problem energy, which is so sticky and heavy and it moves us into more of a space of um, just expansion, right? We're more expanded in how we're looking at things and it can feel a lot better. <laughs> So, so viewers, as you're popping through LinkedIn now, um, if you have questions for Christine, if you are being open enough to share something you're grateful for, like how are you showing up with this holiday season of something you're grateful for, um, we could be a great way to trend this. And also know Christine and I are going to be continuing to keep an eye on this stream in LinkedIn. So if you're watching this on replay, continue to pop in and let us know what your takeaways and what you're grateful for. Um, Christine, I think it's so interesting um, how the woo and the science are starting to come together. Mm -hmm. um, you touched on it, you know, before briefly, but I know when you started researching it, you really delved into science, like really seeing what in the world was going on. What, first of all, what prompted you to do that? I, it's just my nature. Like, I, I don't know if it's uh, like, you know, some people hearing me talk, clearly I am woo, but I'm also very like, you know, science and grounded. I, um, I, I think just, I have, I have a curiosity about life and about why things work and how they work. And it's actually, it's actually the basis of my work is really identifying something from a, from an energetic perspective and then looking at it from all angles and identifying you know, what's the block? Why doesn't it, why isn't it working? What needs to change? How can we change it? And also those, those per, uh, perception shifts um, are huge. So, you know, with gratitude, um, I just, I guess I just, I don't know. I mean, I was just curious about, about what, like, I know gratitude works. I mean, I've, I've been practicing it for, you know, I mean, I'm, 56. So I've been practicing it since I was probably, I don't know, in my late teens, um, just knowing that that in order to create change in my life, I needed to be grateful for the things that I had. Um, and, and, you know, have seen the results of that have seen the results of, of care of, you know, having a grateful heart and, and um, being appreciative of everything that I have in my life. I, I feel like it's created a a tremendous amount of abundance for me. Um, but I was curious, you know, what's going on out there? And I know that I know, you know, science is being able to identify that auras really exist and, you know, um, quantify and clarify how meditation benefits us. And right. so I, you know, I don't know, I guess I was, I wanted to write something on gratitude and I didn't want it to just be 
I didn't want it to just be anecdotal. So I just started searching. I was like, you know, what kind of, what kind of actual, um, you know, studies are there on gratitude? And I, you know, there were quite a few. Um, yeah, there were quite a few. <laughs> So Tara's weighing in that she's uh, she's so grateful that she's connected to both of us, which uh, wow, well, I'll, I'll speak up. I'm very grateful to have Tara in my that. life. I'm grateful too. <laughs> but she goes on, she, you know, Tara's a working mom and uh, with two two fairly young boys, uh, elementary school. So I'll, I consider that fairly young, having kids who are in their good 20s. Uh, question would be, what are some good ways to get the young kids started with a gratitude practice? I have a five, about, I have a, a 10 and a five, she has a 10 and a five year old, right, right. Um, so how do we get our young kids involved in it? Like, how do we yeah. teach young? Yeah, I, you know, it can be as simple as just the, you know, when they get up in the morning, you know, five things you're grateful for and everybody just lists off what they're grateful for and when they get in the car after school you know what are five things what are five things that you know made you happy today um and then at the end of the day like it, you know just getting them focused on that but i love when i do conscious parenting stuff i love to take kids are so like connected they're so present and 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 able to go so much deeper than than adults tend to give them credit for. So mm -hmm. I would actually I would actually encourage them to look at when they're grateful for something, name three things that make up that gratitude. Like what is that gratitude made up of? I can't tell you how going deeper with the practice, going deeper with your connection to what what you have gratitude for creates a huge change. It starts to really um help you see your life and the world differently, which then of course bring, I think opens up doors for you. So, so that's what I would say, you know, try to play with them um, in that way of, uh, you know, if they're, if they're grateful for um, uh, chocolate pudding, you know, name three things that the chocolate pudding made you feel. Right. And so maybe they felt happy and maybe they felt um, silly and, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. Just let them let them sort of, you know, free flow with whatever is there. I, I love that. <laughs> you just made me smile because um, at the beginning of the pandemic, when my daughter and her then future husband moved in with us and everybody was working, you know, kind of running a little bit of a co-working space. <laughs> right. um, I was grateful for that my son-in-law to be liked putting, I was the very few people who liked putting chocolate pudding together with ice cream. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you like that too? I was like, yeah. I'm so grateful you're here, Terry. <laughs> yeah, and I, and it, it was very true He yeah. because he brought a levelness to the family, mm -hmm. right? An outside energy, a new energy that was different that when any everybody's tempers were running higher, I was grateful that he has such an even keel mannerism. Yeah. So I hear what you're saying. It's not just being grateful that he was with us, but the presence he brought with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, as I would say, the energy underneath, right? It's the energy underneath the, the, the moment of gratitude. And, and when you start to look at it this way, it will be different for, you know, every situation, which is, which to me is, is, you know, fun. <laughs> Yeah. And, and speaking of fun, I'll, I'll share, you know, another thing that I did with uh, two girlfriends a few years ago, um, we wanted to hold each other accountable. And we said, you know what, we're just going to do a group text. And it doesn't matter what time of the day that anybody weighs in. And if we fall off the wagon a little bit, one of us will pop it back and start it again. So that accountability piece, and I love to bring that to our little group text is, what's what's that level deeper so mm -hmm. i'm always grateful for the holidays with my family you know and that's a very surface grateful for the holidays with my family yeah what's the deeper level right what mm -hmm. it is it is it's it's could be sitting i'm grateful that to just actually sit on the couch and have quiet time together yeah if we're watching a movie i'm grateful that we sit around the table and play games mm -hmm. you know it's that time of conversation and fun yeah. looking that level deeper. And I think, I think, so just to shift that a little bit or to add to it is, is what is the, what's the quality of it? So, so sitting on the couch is what it's comfort. 
it's mm -hmm. love, it's, it's connection, it's community, right? It's tapping into those, those aspects of what that, what those moments are made up of. That's, that's when it really starts to um, make its way in and get out of the mental body and really make its way into, you know, your full body, your whole being. I love that. Now, there's some talk of, and I'd love you to be able to weigh in, the correlation between gratitude and abundance. Mm -hmm. Can you, is, is, where's the connection there? What, what's the relationship? Well, I'll talk about this from a, a conscious energetic perspective. I don't, mm -hmm. I haven't seen any, any, uh, have I seen any, I don't know if I've seen any studies that actually map that. I know there's one study, um, did a, did MRIs of people while they were, I think they were doing gratitude practices. They were thinking, I don't know, it was something they were mapping uh, the, with an MRI and it, and there's a, like a reward center that gets triggered, um, which is interesting. Right. But I, I, what I see energetically is that when we are, when we're grateful for what we have in our life, it, it opens us up when we're not grateful, when we're, annoyed when we're angry, when we're frustrated, we close down. And when we close down, if you think of, um, think of the process of giving and receiving, it's, it is, it's an, it's an energetic action, right? I give something, I receive something, there's an exchange there. And so if you are, if you're angry and frustrated or annoyed or, or, um, feeling hopeless, like you're, you're closing it all off. And there's no, there, you're, you're basically, when something comes to you, it's, you're not going to see it. You're, it's going to bounce back out. You're not, you know, you're not going to receive it to the level that you can actually receive it. So that's where I see the connection between gratitude and abundance is that, you know, the more, the more that you appreciate life and what you have, the more you're able to appreciate life and what you have, you have. Right? it's just it's, a, it's, it's an so, expounding it's, right it's, it's showing up with that glass is half full on a consistent basis yeah yeah well you know it's interesting like humans humans are are you know we're we're programmed to seek out negativity because because the negativity is looking for those moments is what has kept us alive it's kept us you know, safe and, and moving. But so we were kind of have to combat that, that natural in, um, uh, instinct to look for or, or sit in what isn't right, mm -hmm. because that's, that's where we're programmed. And if you look at the Facebook files and all the information that's come out about how negativity um, is what sells, right? Negativity is what keeps mm -hmm. people engaged. And that's because you're triggering these aspects that are, they're, you know, pretty primitive, I think, in, in our, in our, uh, in our psyche. Um, so the more that we can, we can combat that and focus on the things that we appreciate and the things that, that make us feel full and make us feel connected. And, and that's why I say, like, when you have that moment of gratitude, really try to identify the, the energies, the feelings that are made up in that. Because like, so for you, Ivy, when, you know, you mentioned about sitting on the couch and when I said, well, it's joy, it's connection, it's comfort. How did that feel when you saw it from that angle? Oh, I had a warmth that got, went right through me. Right? It's like you just have it. It's like. <laughs> I love that question. I, I truly, like a warmth went right through me. Yeah, yeah. So, it, you know, and so that's the thing is that um, like when so going deeper into the work that I do with people, once you identify a moment of gratitude and energy a feeling, you can have that anytime you want. So you can let's say that you're in a total slump and you're and it's just, you know, things are just not feeling right. You can take a step back and connect to exactly that. Like I'm grateful for sitting on my couch with my children and how, like, what are, what are three qualities that are there with that? And boom, you know, it's right, you're, you're right in it. It's filled you I in like and you've, you've shifted. So Dara is popping in and she's asking, it seems that so much about gratitude is about stopping and noticing. Mm -hmm. She goes on to say, do you feel that it matters whether you are writing it down, speaking it out loud, or just simply thinking it? 
Well, you know, that's a great question because um, I don't ever think anything is wrong. So the way that you can do it, you do it. Um, and I will say that there is something very powerful about getting out of your mind. Um, when we think things, it, it's a very different space than when we speak it or when we actually take the information, bring it through the brain, down through the arm and out onto paper and like sort of release it into the world. So um, if you look at it in layers, thinking it is probably like the, the top layer. Um, writing it down is probably the second layer and actually saying it, even if you're saying it to yourself is, is a whole other level of getting the information, you know, connecting to what it is that you're grateful for. And, you know, I know for us very often on Thanksgiving, we start the meal with everybody sharing something they're grateful for. Um, and it's interesting when you have the youngest ones go first. So, it is, how, it, how so? So, um, when we have the youngest ones go first, they're less, they don't see the things from a place of judging, saying it right or wrong. They don't think anything. They just blurt whatever is on top of mind. <laughs> and it's like, you know, what, what's one thing you're, you know, what is something you're grateful for now that we're sitting around and it's sitting down at Thanksgiving? They're like, the sweet potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and, you know, and I, and I see like, tell, tell me more says, you know, right. it's like, well, I've been waiting all month for the sweet potatoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah. it, it's true when we put things out there, you know, when, you know, thoughts become, thoughts have a huge power, mm -hmm. you know, and when we think about even in setting, um, tenja truly, tangential goals, right, in, in our businesses. And when we think about them, there's a huge power from thinking about them to creating them, speaking them out loud, mm -hmm. right, putting them out there in the into the universe, into the action, into that conference room, even if it's virtual. Yeah. And then something else that when you tangibly write it out. Yeah. 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 It's, um, the, you know, when I look at, like, thought to to writing to paper you know that that process it actually mirrors how we how we manifest on an energetic level which i find mm -hmm. really interesting so there is something very powerful like when uh, i work with my students and we do intention setting um i i have them write them out so that they're putting them out but there's a really um there uh, so i i've taken mind maps and turn them into manifestation maps and they are they're magical so you take the you know you draw your circle you put your scent like what this focus is and then you just write all these things off of it that that you know come to mind of how you're going to get it or what you need to do or whatever it is and then you put it away and you go back and look at it in six months and i swear to you like there will be so many things checked off that just fell into place like it's so powerful to take it out of just the thought process like up here in the mind and putting it out and kind of like it's, it's so I keep seeing like it's like putting it on a boat setting it to sail <laughs> right? right and the greatest thing is you get to show up at those greatest shores yes. right when we when we when we jump forward that period of time and we're at that amazing island that the boat took us to and we see how much we've accomplished yeah yeah, and it's really, it's really, really, really amazing and rewarding, you know, to go like, oh, yeah, I put all that stuff out there and look, like, look what happened. Poof. Yeah, <laughs> and it seems like poof, right? Because there was no effort in it. It's just like stuff started to come in because you set it out there. So yeah. you, we set we set an intention. Once we put it out there, and it's actually, especially when we write these things down, we create an energy around it. We also create actions around it. Yeah. And if we let go of the attachment and stay in that action, we accomplish so much. It's so true. And I know I mean, you're a big intention center. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and right. Like, yes, I am. <laughs> I know. <laughs> to write some stuff down. It's my time of year to do my writing. <laughs> right. Well, Christine, how can our viewers continue to learn more about your work? Stay in touch and see. I know you're 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 always right. You're you're an avid writer. You have um, books out. Or, consistent blog poster um, on a bunch of media. So how can they learn more and stay in touch? 
Um, so they can visit my website, which is christineagro.com, and it's A-G-R-O, um, oftentimes misspelled as Argo. <laughs> Um, and, um, Instagram is a good place too. I've got two, um, two Instagrams. One is Christine Agro and the other one is Spiritual Seekers, uh, Playground. So if you're interested in taking your consciousness deeper and understanding more about why you're here and being able to move and shift some energy and have some growth, that's a good place. So fabulous. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Ivy. It's been wonderful. It has been great. And viewers, remember, um, continue to weigh in, continue to share what you see and what you're grateful for, especially during this week of Thanksgiving. And um, Christine, I will continue to always stay in touch. We know each other a long time and it has been wonderful. Yes, it's really very wonderful. grateful Thank you. I am to very have grateful you as part as well. of my life. <laughs> Me too. Thank you. Viewers and listeners, remember what I said. Continue, please continue to post what you're grateful for, what has made an impact for you in tuning into today's Slater Success, Success Live with Christine, and what the actions you're going to take away. Also, mark your calendars for next Tuesday, November 30th, for the first day of the month. For those of you who don't know, we are kicking off on Her Success Story, our podcast, as well as, as on Slater Success Live our nonprofit series where we spent about the next six weeks through the holidays focusing on how we can give back. You know, I'll always say the holidays are about giving and receiving and it's my greatest joy and I'm very grateful for the amount of different nonprofits we're doing. So this year for the very first time, we're highlighting the nonprofits on Her Success Story, the podcast, as well as Slater Success Live. Next Tuesday, the 30th at 4.30, join me as we speak to the executive director of Savvy Ladies that just had their benefits. So I'm looking forward to that being an amazing, amazing show. Um, Savvy Ladies have been part of for uh, numerous years. And I'm Judy is a great, great insight into women and their financial futures. So I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me here at Slater Success Live.